Hi, I am Guy Gallet, Senior Field Service Technician for Emerson Actuation Technologies. Today, we are in our training center at our world headquarters. We are going to take a closer look at the Bettis Smart Electrohydraulic Operator, also known as the EHO. The demo unit we have here is a spring return fail-safe actuator with a backup stroke accumulator. Today, we are going to walk through the steps to change out your gear pump in the event that this component has been damaged. Let's take a look at some of the main components. Here we have our smart EHO. This is our LDM, which is our local display module. This is where we have our local interface with our selector switch and control knob. Above this, we have our hydraulic manifold. To the left of our manifold, we have our pressure relief valve. In the front here, we have our two flow controllers for our closing and ESD solenoid. Now this configuration can change depending on how your unit is set up, um, so that's something to pay attention to. Behind this, we have our analog pressure gauge. To the right side of our manifold, we have our hand pump isolation valve in the event you need to use the hand pump. Both of these components are attached to our electrical enclosure. Below our electrical uh, enclosure, we have our hydraulic power module. The hydraulic power module consists of five main components. Our electric motor, our motor adapter, our flexible coupling, our gear pump adapter, our gear pump, and your reservoir. Attached to our reservoir here, you'll see the manual hand pump. Behind your hydraulic power module, is the actuator itself. It's a Bettis G series actuator, spring return. On this side, we have our power module. In the middle here, we have our drive. And on the right side here, we have our spring module. Now on this unit, we have an optional feature. We have a backup stroke accumulator. Our backup stroke accumulator is designed to give us additional strokes in the event that we have no power or way to power the actuator. Before we get started, we're going to talk about safety and tooling. So let's start with safety. Some of the hazards include stored energy, pinch points, fallen objects, electrical hazards, lacerations, and environmental hazards, meaning spills. To help mitigate some of these risks, you will need to use the proper PPE. You will need gloves, safety glasses and safety shoes, oil catch pan, and a spill kit in case of a spill. Depending on where you are doing this, you may need additional PPE based on site requirements. Next, let's talk about the tools needed to do the job. Some of the tools that are needed here will be a funnel with a screen filter, an oil catch pan, some spill mats, You'll need your new gear pump, your adjustable wrench, your ratchet with extension in a 9 16th inch socket. You'll need a 9 16th Allen and a 3 8 Allen. You'll need a 9 16th wrench, an 11 16th wrench, an 8th inch Allen, a flathead screwdriver. You'll need some uh, caps for your tubing lines. We have some anti-seize lubricant for your pump shaft, some thread sealant uh, in case you need it for your fittings and your plugs. We have some o-ring lubricant. We've got our fluid. You'll need some gloves, some rags, and we have some additional spill mats here as well. Let's begin the procedure to remove and replace our gear pump. So first thing we want to do is we want to de-energize our unit. And with this unit, we have two different types of energy that we need to be worried about, right? We have electrical energy, and then we have high pressure hydraulic fluid as stored energy. So before we want to work on anything like this, we need to make sure that it is safely de-energized to avoid any safety incidents. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to kill the power. 
When we kill the power on this unit, depending on your configuration, your ESD solenoid may activate. And when your ESD solenoid activates, it's going to open up and it's going to drain any pressure in the system. But you still may have potential stored energy in the system. So I'm going to show you how to remove any hydraulic stored energy after we do the electrical. So let me disconnect the electrical. Okay. So we've now safely taken our electrical energy uh, away from our actuator. So next up is going to be any trapped pressure in the system. Um, so the first way we're going to do that on an accumulator based system is we're going to start with our manual bypass valve. Your manual bypass valve allows any stored pressure to be put back into your reservoir. So to do that we're going to open it. Use caution when opening these valves. You would like to open them slowly so you don't send high pressure hydraulic fluid quickly into the reservoir. So it's open. So I know that there's no stored energy there now. But on this system we have a backup stroke accumulator. And the backup stroke accumulator stores hydraulic high pressure fluid. So in order to dump that out we have a valve on our system here called our accumulator drain valve. And when we open this valve it's going to send anything that's trapped inside of our accumulator over to our reservoir as well. So now we have safely de-energized the unit. Now that we've safely de-energized our unit, we're going to go through the process for draining all the fluid out of the system. So you're going to need an oil catch pan. Um, you're going to need your 9 16 Allen uh, and some thread sealant. So first thing we want to do is we want to remove our breather cap here. And the reason we want to do that is because there's potential for your breather cap, this diaphragm, to create some suction when your fluid is draining. Um, and you want your fluid to drain as quickly as possible and you want to make sure you evacuate as much as possible of the fluid. Um, so the first thing we want to do is, is unscrew this. You should be able to do it by hand. Uh, but there is potential that it's been tightened or it has some thread sealing on it that's uh, a little stubborn. Uh, and it does have some flats here that you can take an adjustable wrench uh, to turn that off. So we'll remove this first. And I'll set that out the way. We will put our oil catch pan in place. Using our 9 16 Allen, we will take off our plug. And once you get that fairly loose, you can do it by hand. So typically we have um, depending on the size of your unit, you're going to have uh, a small amount of fluid. Uh, the EHO doesn't hold a lot of fluid. Um, you typically have anywhere from half a gallon to three gallons at a max. Um, but like I said, that varies. Uh, so just be sure you're prepared with the right size uh, oil catch pan. Now that we have removed all the fluid out of the system, we will want to put the plug back in place. To do this, you will use the same 19, uh, 9 16 um, Allen head, and you'll want to use some thread sealant on this plug. Um, so I've got some thread sealant um, on here, and we'll tighten this up. Now that we have all the fluid out of the system, it is time to remove our reservoir. Uh, the first step to removing our reservoir is to remove the tube fittings that are attached to it. Uh, in order to do this, you will need an 11 16 wrench uh, and some tube plugs and caps. Now that we've removed the tubing from our reservoir, it's time to remove the four nuts and bolts that hold the reservoir to the gear adapter. 
In order to do this, we will need a 9 16 inch wrench and potentially a 9 16 inch socket with an extension for the back side here. So we'll start with the bottom one here. And you can see it's kind of turning. Um, so what we need to do is hold this. Uh, sometimes you can do it by hand if you can get your hand there, but sometimes you may need to actually put uh, a wrench and socket on it. But it looks like we're gonna be okay here. So you'll want to keep these bolts here so it doesn't just fall off. When you go to remove the final bolt, I like to actually keep my hand here, as you can see it's separating now, uh, and support the reservoir while removing the last bolt. On this unit, it's not that heavy. Uh, but on some of the larger units, uh, it may be fairly heavy, so keep, keep that in mind when doing this repair. And our reservoir just comes straight back. Now you have removed the reservoir. Now that we've removed the reservoir out of the way, we've clearly exposed our gear pump and now we're going to start the process to actually remove this gear pump. The first part of this process we're going to remove uh, the MPT plug here uh, closest to the pump using a 3 8 Allen wrench. Uh, you can use a wrench, I like to use a socket in this case, um, but we'll, we'll remove this first. The reason we're removing this is there's actually a set screw in the coupler that holds the shaft uh, of the pump to the coupler. And we need to back uh, that set screw off. Um, so it's, it's in here. Uh, we'll have to look for the set screw and back that off. So in order to do that, now that we have opened our viewport here, when you look through, and it's going to be hard to see, obviously, here on camera, but what you're looking for is a little round hole with an Allen-headed set screw. Uh, and sometimes you have to actually grab um, a flathead screwdriver uh, to, and stick it in there so that you can roll the coupler around uh, until you can actually see straight into the set screw itself. Um, once you have that coupler in position, you will use an eighth inch um, Allen wrench uh, and you can get that in there uh, and see, I, I'm going to back it off about three turns. I don't want to take it all the way out because it'll fall down in the housing uh, and then you're in trouble because you have to remove all of this to get it back out. So we just want to loosen it enough. To to where it's not touching the shaft anymore and it'll freely allow that pump shaft to slide out uh, from the flexible coupler. Now that we have that done, the next thing we want to do is actually remove our tubing from our outlet and inlet side of our pump and then we have two bolts uh, that we'll remove and we'll slide the pump out. So let's remove our tubing from our pump. We're going to start with our outlet side of the pump tube. Um, so we'll need an 11 16 again to remove the tubing fittings.
Okay, now we have removed our outlet tube. Uh, next we will do the intake tube. Uh, for our intake tube, it's very important to notate the position that it's in and that it goes back to this position. Um, because you can rotate it, um, but if this is pointed down too far, it will scrape along the bottom um, of your reservoir, uh, potentially picking up, you know, any contaminants. Uh, so you want it to be slightly above that. So it's important to notate what position that's in, put it back in the same position when you put it back on the new pump. Uh, and you can do that, you know, you can take a picture. A lot of times I'll take a picture right here. Um, you can also mark it with a Sharpie and make uh, indication marks. Um, whatever works best, best for you and you prefer. Okay, so now we have both of our pieces of tubing out the way. Uh, now we're gonna remove the pump. Uh, in order to do that, we've got two 9 16 bolts here that will need to be removed. Um, you can get to them with a socket and extension. Um, typically you'll need some kind of swivel uh, to get in there or um, a really small quarter inch drive system. Um, but you'll kind of, once you break them loose, they're, they're fairly easy to turn. So if you can get in there and break them loose, Sometimes you can't quite get in there, uh, but that's why we have other options here. So I'll use a wrench instead. Then you can, once they're finger loose, you can use your fingers and take them out. Okay. So now we have both the bolts removed, and now we simply pull the pump straight out. Uh, it's important not to wiggle it this way or any of that. You don't want to throw your flexible coupler off. So you just want to pull straight back. So over here on the bench, we are uh, looking at our old pump that was removed. Um, as you can see here, it's got a couple of uh, O-ring face seal fittings. Um, these will need to be removed from the old pump and installed in the new pump. Okay, so we'll need to move our fittings over. Um, and in order to do that, uh, you've got your O-ring face seal nut is here. Um, and once you get these loose, uh, it'll freely spin out. Um, these fittings don't require any uh, thread sealant. Um, so Essentially, once you break loose that seal, um, you can simply turn them by hand out. Okay, now that we have them out, we can install them on our new pump. Okay, so now we want to install our O-ring face seal uh, 90s um, to our new pump. Um, and these are really easy to use. Um, you essentially just screw them on by hand. Um, and once you get close to your position that you want to be in, but you can't go another turn, that's kind of what you want to do. You don't want to tighten this down. You want to get it to the position it's needed in, and then you tighten this, uh, this nut here for your O-ring face seal. Now, I don't tighten this nut until I get my tubing on, because um, I want to have a little bit of flexibility to line my tubing up. Um, so for the meantime, we'll screw both in to that point and then we'll install the pump. Okay, so now that we have our um, face seal fittings in place, not fully tightened, but in place, um, our next uh, procedure is to stick the pump into the coupler. Uh, and notice there's a, there's a keyway on here uh, that needs to line up. Um, you want to make sure that your O-ring here is installed. You can see there's a small O-ring. Um, 
So make sure that your, your O-ring is installed and lubricated. Um, so then we will take our pump. We want to make sure that we line the keyway up. Okay, now that we have it in there, we can rotate the pump until we line up the two bolt holes that secure the pump in place. Then we can take the bolts uh, and we'll put them in here. We'll just finger tighten them in here for now. Okay, so now we have both those uh, finger tightened, so your pump is in place. Uh, you can kind of give it a little wiggle just to make sure it's centered. Um, you don't want it to be tweaked off to one side. Um, but now we have our pump in place. Okay, so now our pump is in place. Uh, we can go ahead and tighten these, these bolts here. using a 9 16 uh, wrench or socket. You'll want to put about 20 foot-pounds uh, of pressure here. Um, it doesn't need to be exact, but it's around 20 foot-pounds is what you're looking for here. Okay, so now our bolts are tightened. Now we want to tighten our set screw for the shaft. Using an eighth inch Allen wrench, we'll tighten down the set screw. Okay. Now that we have our set screw tightened, now it's time for us to fit our tubing back into place. Okay, so now we'll install uh, our inlet and outlet tubing back into place. Uh, we can start here with, with our um, outlet tubing. And this is why I kind of leave these fittings loose. You can see it's easy for me to kind of get this piece of tube in place. Um, and then I can rotate them so I don't cross thread any of these tube fittings. Um, so we'll get our tubing started. There we go. Okay, now I've got both of those started. We'll use uh, an 11 16 wrench to tighten these down. Okay, so this is why I told you to leave this um, face seal nut loose, because um, now we have our tubing in place. Um, now we can come here and actually tighten this down. Okay, just like that. Now we can put our outlet tubing in place, our inlet, I'm sorry, our inlet tube in place. Uh, and this is where you would refer either to your uh, marks that you've made here or your picture that you took before. The main thing to pay attention to is to make sure that this bottom portion of the tube 
is not going to touch um, the bottom of the reservoir. Uh, so you can kind of get in here and look and see um, where the bottom of that reservoir would be here and you can kind of line it up that way as well. So we will tighten this one down. I will tighten the tube fitting first and then I like to use this as a little handle uh, to hold in place while I tighten the nut. Okay. Now that is good, good and tight. And now we're ready to stick our reservoir back into place. Okay, so now that we have our pump in place and all of our tubing, uh, everything is uh, reconnected, um, we will need to put our O-ring on for our reservoir housing. Um, so you wanna take some type of grease or lubricant here um, and lube up your O-ring. That's a, this is important um, if you if you've worked with O-rings in the past that you understand that they, they have to be lubricated. If you put them in dry, they will dry out over time and crack. So you want to make sure there's some some lubrication on them before you install them. Uh, and it also helps keep the O-ring in place in the groove. Kind of acts as a um, an adhesive a little bit just to kind of keep it in that groove. Uh, so now it's in the groove, uh, and now we can stick our reservoir uh, in place. Okay, so we've got our reservoir here. Um, you know, always make sure your surface is, is nice and clean, doesn't have anything on it. Um, and then we'll take care to slide this on. Um, be very cautious of your O-ring that is there, that it doesn't come out of its groove. Um, you'll want to make sure that you don't pinch that. Okay, so just tightening, finish tightening the bolts right now, these last two. And now our reservoir uh, is secure to the gear pump adapter. So the next thing we need to do is reconnect our tubing. Now that we've finished connecting all our tubing, our tubing is nice and tight. Um, the next step here is gonna be to fill the unit with fluid. Um, in order to do that, we're gonna use um, a funnel. Uh, the funnels I like to use are, are like this one that have a, uh, some sort of micron filter in it. Um, you always wanna keep your hydraulic system as clean as possible. Um, you don't want any contaminants in your system. Uh, because they can get in uh, to different components and, and wreak some havoc. So you always want uh, your system clean. Uh, so that's why I use this type of filter. Um, and then be sure that you're putting the proper fluid back into the unit. Um, you'll need to refer to your GA drawing. Your GA drawing will have what fluid uh, was put into your um, actuator from the factory and you want to go back with the same fluid. If there's any questions about fluid availability, you need to reach out to the factory, uh, contact us, and, and we will let you know if there's a, an appropriate substitute um, to get your unit back up. So we will fill it back up. Now when filling your unit, you can see there's uh, a sight glass here. So once you start to see fluid here uh, get past your sight glass, you need to be careful. 
um, not to overfill it. Okay, so once uh, we've put the appropriate amount of fluid in there, um, we want to just double check. So you've got a high and a low port uh, a marking here, um, so green and red. Um, so what you can do is just stick this in there, um, use it as your dipstick, and see where you are. Uh, it looks like I'm right at the green mark um, here. So that looks good to me. Um, so I will screw on the breather cap. And so now we have successfully put uh, fluid in the unit. So we are ready to uh, run the motor and pump uh, to start cycling some fluid through the system. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna re-energize the unit. We're gonna reconnect our electrical um, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay. So we've now got power to our actuator. Um, what I like to do uh, is to leave our manual bypass valve in the open position uh, as well as the accumulator drain valve in the open position. And I wanna let the, the motor and pump, I wanna let it run for a minute. And what that does is it cycles fluid around uh, and cleans out any air that may be trapped in the system. Um, so we'll go ahead and move it to uh, its local position. Uh, give it an open command. And you can hear it kick on and it's running. Um, so I'm gonna let it do that for a minute. Uh, we may get an HA alarm um, yeah, we're going to get an HA alarm, so it's, it's, it's going to give us a hydraulic failure, so you may have to do that uh, a few times, um, but that's okay, it'll eventually clear itself. Um, for the purpose of what we're doing right now, we're trying to cycle that fluid around. Um, so once you've done that for a minute or so, what you can then do is close your manual bypass valve. And since we have an accumulator, also your accumulator drain valve. Now we'll close those. Go back to local position and give it an open command. You can hear instantly the tone changed on the pump. That's telling you that it, it's, it's pushing fluid. And it did. So it went open. Pressure's up where it's supposed to be, 2200. And it's in its open position. So we'll go close. You'll want to cycle it a few times to let that fluid kind of wrap through the system. Um, so we'll give it a close command, let it bleed off. Uh, we'll give it an open command again. It's always good to test it multiple times. Okay, so now that we've cycled it a few times, um, we want to go ahead and, and recheck our, our fluid levels. We want to make sure that um, it doesn't need any topping off on the system. So we'll do a quick check on our dipstick here, kind of get an idea where our level is. So it looks good to me. Uh, so we don't need to top anything off here. Um, so we know that's good. Um, you'll just want to do a final check. You'll want to go through your, your unit, just walk around it, uh, check your tubing fittings, um, anything that may have been missed um, during reassembly, uh, especially because you're getting pressure in your lines now. You may have um, some, some pressure that may be leaking by one of your tube fittings that you, you had to break loose uh, to do the repair. Um, I notice here that I still need to put uh, one of the MPT plugs back in. So it's always good to go through and check your unit uh, when you're done with it. But other than that, we have successfully completed the procedure for changing a pump on your smart EHO.